realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Radio. I am your host, Chanel Lynn, and this special thanks goes to the lovely Miss Kimmy Kim and Jerry Royce at PositivePower21.org for our topic. On tonight, we'll be discussing the meat of the intro that we gave one last week. Wake up. It's time to go home with our very, very, very special, beautiful, brilliant, and lovely guest. 
the boss lady, Miss Kimmy Kim. How are you this evening, my dear sister? I am blessed. How about you? I'm blessed because you're on the show with me on tonight. It's such a blessing. <laughs> it's always good to, um, you know, tag along with you. You know, you're so yeah. uh, talented and gifted. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, say, it takes one to know one. Absolutely. No one. Um, now, last week, um, last week, like I said, was the introduction to Wake Up, It's Time to Go Home, where I talked a bit about how America is not what we were raised to believe. It's not what we thought um, this country that claimed to be, you know, built on biblical principles and with the cliche slogan, you know, the land of the free, home of the brave, with justice and liberty for all. <laughs> But, you know, we've come to know, you know, that America has not been that for us, those of us who are considered, you know, um, black or considered, as they call us, African American Americans. And, you know, even with their religious, you know, um, systems, we've been raised to believe. And, you know, it hasn't been, the fruit of it hasn't been really based on biblical principles. Um, Kimmy, what? Had, what what has been your um your thoughts and experience uh, with with that and and I'm 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 asking along the lines of you know we just you know just this past Sunday was Easter Sunday okay and <laughs> Mind you, I'll let the world know, you know, this is my first year not celebrating Easter because I found out that, you know, really, I mean, and the fruit of it really shows that it's really not about the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ. It's really about the Easter bunny laying these magical eggs, you know, um, and giving candy to the kids, but the origin of Easter, I found out, and the listeners can look it up, it's really about the pagan god Ishtar, spelled I-S-H-T-A-R, which she is the goddess of sex and fertility and war. Um, and this is actually even spoken of in the Bible, King James Version. <laughs> But, you know, we have everybody saying this is Resurrection Resurrection Sunday, you know, Palm Sunday was, you know, or Good Friday, where they say that Christ died on Friday and rose on the third day, which was on Sunday. But when you really think about even looking at it, even, you know, as far as time frame, if he died on Friday, he could not have possibly rose on Sunday morning if it was three days. <laughs> My goodness. Kimmy, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Kimmy? Well, I really believe he did do those things, and it may not be the accurate date, but I'd rather mm-hmm. celebrate the resurrection than Easter. So right. I mm-hmm. remember growing up celebrating Easter because they wanted to make it fun for the children. Well, as you get older, you do better. So right now, mm-hmm. I just do it as a memory of what, Jesus did for me. We don't even know when he was born. We don't know when he died and rose and got it with all power, but we know he did those things. So with that being said, mm-hmm. I'd rather celebrate the resurrection than Easter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with that okay. being said, it is the third day. That, that's the third day, and Sunday is the first day of the week. So I really believe we're not going to all know everything until he comes back. So you're right. We cannot celebrate everything that the world does because we got to be careful with that too. <laughs> and then well, I have learned, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. then also I've learned that you have to watch who you listen to when it comes to your salvation. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. Because some people will teach, you know, in church that, you know, like uh, there was this one pastor, um, there was this one, actually this well-known, I think he's on the road to being um, uh, famous via Instagram. He's one of those Christian comedians, um, very funny guy. 
Um, but, you know, he posted a, a, a video clip of his pastor um, or, or one of his big brother pastors that he looks up to, listens to. Um, there was a video clip, small clip, um, of what his pastor was talking about or teaching or preaching that, you know, smoke if you want to, drink if you want to, have sex outside of marriage if you want to, God still loves you. You know, God still, you know, is still, uh, you know, with you. God is still um, uh, forgiving you. And it kind of, you know, gives the idea overall that you can live however you want to live and still love God. But, I mean, is that really biblical? Is that biblical principle? Is that really what God requires for us? You know what I'm saying? No, we know that's not true. <laughs> so, Can you break that you down? Be who you listen to. Well, you said you got to be careful who you're listening to, you know? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of people, especially, you know, Christians and, you know, a lot of leaders, this is kind of the argument kind of sort of because here we, we have, the argument of grace, you know, versus God's law <laughs> and what is taught. You know what I'm saying? What's taught is like what the young man was saying, oh, do whatever, live as you will, basically. Do, go ahead, smoke and drink if you want to, have sex if you want to. Uh, if this is what you want to do, then you do this. You can do this and grace covers you. I remember this being taught in in church. I remember this. <laughs> Give me one of your thoughts. Man, what you think you can do? Because as you grow in grace, you don't want yeah. to do those things anymore. So you have to figure out who your daddy truly is in your heart. If your daddy is. I refuse to believe that you're going to still do the same thing and you claim it to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Remember the woman at the well um, who had five husbands, and Jesus knew mm-hmm. about them? I'm sure she didn't go mm-hmm. back and say, oh, let's go and get some more husbands. I'm sure she was changed. So that's, right. not, that's not valid. It says in, in the Bible, as you grow in grace, you grow. You become a – well, it also depends on what type of believer you are. If you're mm. um, a milk believer or a meat mm. believer. Now, milk believers uh, – you know, but at the same time, you still get convicted. So then if you don't get convicted, then Jesus cannot be your Savior because the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. will convict you when you do things. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. say that mm-hmm. I love the Lord and continually do those things. Don't get me wrong. We do fall. But what I'm saying is just right. to do it because you know you that God's going to forgive you. That's not how it goes. It's like when right. you know you try to do good, but evil is present. You're trying to do good, not you're trying to do bad. That's the difference. I don't believe that. Or not even valid. Right. Or 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 not even trying to do good at all, according to what scripture says. Exactly. You mm-hmm. Like love is. Well, good is that if you're going to do that, yourself. you might just be. Is that you might become Satan? You know, daddy. I mean, daughter or son. You know, you're right. right. Yeah. So that's why you you said it right. Christians, we were taught. In some churches that way, but I wasn't taught that way growing up. But there are some churches who teach us that, you know, mm-hmm. you have to pray for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are pastors, you know, these mega churches, you know, especially, I'll say it, I don't care, mm-hmm. Joel Osteen. <laughs> I'll mm-hmm. say it, you know, I'm Girl. Joel Osteen. You know, I, Girl. <laughs> you don't have to say much mm-hmm. if, you, if you can't, but, you know, I'll say it. I'll say it. No, I no, I'm not a Joel O. C. fan. I used to I I used to listen yeah. to him back in old one, but not anymore. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. I used to listen to him too a lot, you know. And they they these these pastors, you know, they talk a good game, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, you know, yeah, prosperity, yes. Sounds good, you know. <laughs> you know, and he you know, he, he he'll go into, you know, um teaching about how God wants all of us to live, you know, in prosperity and the the abundant life and everything, which is true. But when you talk about when you, you know, when he was on the talk show and it was asked, you know, if there were, you know, what does he have to say to, you know, 
the person who is living um, a sinful lifestyle, he'll say, well, you know, it's not my place. (laughs) He'll say it's not my place to really, you know, tell this person or judge this person. This This is what he says. It's not my place to judge. It's not my place to judge a person uh, based on how they live their life. I believe that part, but I didn't like the fact how he said he he can say that according to the Bible, that's not right. I'm not going to judge you, but I'm going to go based on what the Bible says. He couldn't say that. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, that's my thing. Because I can judge you. That's because I'm still working on mine. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, that's that's a, a, a huge misunderstanding that I believe a lot of people have, especially the, you know, back in the day, um, you know, Christians of back in the day kind of, be you know, had that misunderstanding. But here we have pastors like Joel Osteen who says that, you know, now he's in a position to teach biblical principles to teach God's truth but he himself he says that he can't judge but if you say what thus said the Lord simply what thus said the Lord in scripture are you judging or are you declaring what the Bible says you know what I'm saying someone who is a pastor you're declaring what the Bible says you know my sister you're you know you're a preacher (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you declare what the Bible says. You gotta defend the Bible, and a lot of people, yeah. I don't believe, they water us down the gospel so that well, they can, right. grow, you know, big churches exactly. and you know make people feel good. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Preaching a feel good, preaching a feel good message, and the feel good message only keeps those who would be awake sleep. Come on. And then what do they say? <laughs> what, are see, what's the difference? And then, and then what do they say after they realize? They'll be like, see, what's the difference between them and I mean, they're the same. See, and that's why we have to be careful who we listen to because I was almost caught up in another preacher that mm-hmm. I really liked, and mm-hmm. you know, after understanding what his beliefs are, I can't follow that. My beliefs are three and one, and they're you know mm-hmm. they are deity. They are. They all you need all three of them, and some people mm-hmm. don't believe three and one anymore. So, if the Bible says a three and one, I'm going with the Bible. <laughs> can you? Can you? I mean, you can, can separate you, the uh, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mhm. 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 So it's really important, like as young believers and also seasoned believers, to guide the young believers into understanding that they must understand what they, who they listen to, because sometimes people have hidden agendas, and this Mm -hmm. world, I have learned so much, Mm -hmm. Um, you have to, because God only allows this type of wisdom to certain people, because some people may not believe in the third eye, truly the third eye, like we do, and it's amazing how some of us are still blind, we are Mm. still like bringing the worldly people into into the um into the church like for instance you know with all love with all on with all respect not disrespecting anyone but we would say see jay-z and beyonce they got the money but you don't know what mm-hmm. they do mm-hmm. to get that money you know they'll have those right. types of discussion in church you know but people have to understand that they are not of us they are of their own the world God. system and Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we bring that into the church, and we bring, you know, it's just, it's just really sad that we are so blind. And I'm praying that God uh, really open up, you know, some of the saints' eyes because they're still looking at the physical eye and not the spiritual eye. Yeah, I think that in order for someone to really, in order for God to wake up anyone they have to realize that they are asleep and ask Mm, God to give them the wisdom. You said something that I think was really important uh, when you were talking about how, you know, the church is kind of bringing in worldly, you know, the way I took it was 
church is adopting worldliness, and I always pay attention to patterns. Uh, and when I, at some part, um, like in the beginning of, of of when I was learning about Christianity and Catholicism, um, what they were saying and what they were teaching was that they that the you know Catholics had adopted um, paganism. This is what they this is what they were saying that the that uh, uh, the Pope um, Constantine adopted while trying to bring in the quote unquote um, unregenerated people, the pagan people. This is what they were saying that they and that they had this big huge celebration for you know their gods on this specific date. I won't say which which one it is. I don't even because I I don't think that's really that much important right now. Uh, but they adopted their beliefs into Catholicism, and so this is how they. And since you know Easter just passed, we'll just say you know Easter is one of them. Not knowing that this false god or this pagan god was Ishtar. And this false god was created or born or whatever, as however they say it, you know, on this particular day. And they have, you know, put the resurrection of Christ in bed with this thing. And so while the very people who are proclaiming that Christ rose or died on this Friday and rose on this Sunday, this is the exact same time that pagans are celebrating Ishtar. This is why I believe it is important to talk about stuff like this because this is the thing that keeps us asleep. This is the thing that keeps us uh, 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 blind to the truth. If Jesus said, come out from amongst them and be ye separated or be holy, for I am holy, then you we cannot mimic the world. We can't mimic the, the, the pagans. We cannot mimic or be in a line with something that is totally against God. You know what I'm saying, Kimmy? Did I lose Absolutely. You? I really believe <laughs> that is true. But then we have to also remember, we don't really know when Christ was born or when he rose. But it's just a celebration for me. I know those dates may not be the right date, but I know he rose, like you said. But guess what? Mm -hmm. The good news is I don't focus on the pagan. I focus on the Christ. And, yes, we have to stop saying Happy Easter because that is a pagan. So I have learned now to say Happy Resurrection for some reason. When someone tells me Happy Easter, I frown up now because I know what it means. And it is mm -hmm. an evil tie for the world. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. we still have Christians saying Happy Easter. Yeah. yeah. It's just important yeah. what you say, that what comes out of your mouth. You won't hear me say Happy Easter no more. <laughs> and, and, you, you know, right. and another thing, the, the difference between Christmas and Christmas, the X must. Even though Christ may not have been born that day, I still would say Merry Christmas to see, and not with the X, because what X M A S means that they are anti-Christ. People don't know that either, mm -hmm. and you still see Christians using that in their car. They'll put the X dash M A S on a you know Merry Christmas card. They don't know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. Yeah, you have to you have to be careful how you say things. You really do. Yeah, I mean, and then. Even you're so right. trying to get in off, uh, yeah. And then, like, even as far as far as you know, what we're being you know taught about about receiving blessings, you know. Yeah. Um, I mentioned something last week um, in the intro of this that you know, um, there's a lot of cunning craftiness when it comes to that. Yeah. We have you know we have a lot of people. Especially like prosperity prophets, you know, prosperity preachers that always yeah. like to talk about, you know, oh, you're going to get this. Oh, you're going to get that house. 
You're going to get that car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to get that job. You're going to get that if you just reach up and grab it. Or if you run around this church three times, hot jump over right. that chair, <laughs> turn this car wheel. your tides. <laughs> right. Right. Or, or send me your tides and you'll be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. So this seed to this pro so so your seed to this prophet, so your seed to this yeah. pastor, the focus is totally not on Amen. biblical principles. Yeah. Amen. I agree with that. Because if you look at it, um, I'm still amazed how the Son of Man, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that he didn't have a home. He didn't have a big mansion. He was born in a manger. So he gave me the example that it's not about riches on earth, even though he can give us those things, but that's not the important thing is to build your riches in heaven. That's mm-hmm. what I see when I um, take a reflection of his life because he went from house to house, <laughs> he got fed, and he fellowship with other believers, you know, like with his disciples. He didn't have mm-hmm. a house. He didn't have like a big car. He rode like when it was like Hosanna, he came in on a donkey. <laughs> right, <laughs> <Not a horse. laughs> right, right. So my right. point is, right. these austerity teachers are not of Christ. Uh, because uh, if you look on. at the, some of the, not all, I can't say all, but I really believe if you are a true believer of God, you will not really focus on the things on earth, but more so build your riches in heaven. And secondly, how come when you have a seminar, everything costs like $500 and you're rich? That's the part. Girl, you you better talk about it. And secondly, (laughs) why are you hanging around with artists like, you know, like people who are part of of another God? If you are a a pastor of the um, living God and you're hanging around with people who their God is of the world. So that how you determine, you know, if that person is really real. Because it's kind of hard to really be rich in this system and not really do certain things. It really is. They own the media. They own everything. God gave mm. Satan this world. Mm. He says the God of this world belongs to Satan. And I sometimes reflect on this video that I have on YouTube. And it talks about that most people in the world, in the world, not all, most people of the world want the things of Satan. They want the riches. They want the house. They want the cars. But that's not of mm-hmm. God. Even though he owns everything, that's not important. Because I want my well done bird in heaven, and then I'm, we live forever, and we're going to have the, the finest thing of life, of in life because mm-hmm. we have eternal life. We would never die. Mm-hmm. We would never have sickness and pain and Sadness, and we'll live by like royalty at that exactly. time. Exactly, yeah. we're gonna be. Yeah. Come on now, we're gonna be called. We'll live like royalty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> and it's just you know, and it it wasn't that Christ couldn't have those those flashy things or that flashy lifestyle. Christ wanted to set the example of the truth that your focus really shouldn't even be on you obtaining the world's position possession that your focus should be on loving each other building up each other helping each other to abide by God's commandment you know because right. even Paul said you know should we continue to sin because we have this grace you know and he said God forbid <laughs> see you got that in Romans. Come on now, Romans. I think that's yeah, seven. And then, come on. Yeah, yeah. And then even Christ said that He didn't come to get rid of the law or the prophets. He came to He came to fulfill it. So it doesn't mean that we should not abide by the commandments. Christ even said, "If you love me, then keep right. my commandments." Right. Because <laughs> when you love, that, that and, when you love the commandments, is going to cover them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. When you don't want to murder or hurt the one. Yeah. Oh. When you love know, someone, you ain't gonna want to hurt them. You ain't not gonna want to covet against them or deal right. for them. Or you're not. Them. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You're not gonna want to. You're not gonna want to. You're not gonna want to think that somebody else's husband is yours. You're not gonna want to think now. that. 
you're not going to want to hurt your sister in any kind of way or your brother. Any, you're not going to want to gossip about them when they need help. You're going to want to help them and not withhold help your them. hand of help because you I'm have the world possessions yeah, in your exactly. Come on. So the way so, to be blessed yeah. is to abide by what, by what Christ said to do. If he said yeah. give and it will be given to you, good measure, press Come down, on. shaking together. Will yeah, men give on, unto your bosom? <laughs> then, if that's how you know, if that's what he said to do, and you'll be blessed by other people giving to you, then jumping around a, a chair and turning cartwheels and giving tithes and offering and money and seed offerings to this prophet, because he said, if you give me five thousand dollars, you're going to get this five million dollars in the mail and so on and so forth. Then you should know. You know, your your alarm system should be like, okay, no, 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 something ain't right. Because the word says if I just simply give, <laughs> if I give, it will be given but to you me. Be a so giver I too, can't. Now. You know, some people just give. A cheerful you can't just giver. give. Be a cheerful giver. Come on. So I can't give my $500 to profit watermelon head. Okay. But then my <laughs> sister calls me on the phone and she needs. Mm-hmm. But I can't go and I can't help my sister. Come on now. And I think that I'm pleasing. I'm pleasing in in God's eyesight. That's not how but it is. But this is how That's we're exactly. Mm-hmm. But this is how the majority of us are going about our lives, and then we wonder, we we wonder why there's so much lack going on in our own culture we wonder why we can never come together we wonder why why is there so much hate why are we hating each other you know why, why are we not helping each other you know why because the major reason is on, go ahead go ahead because what the major reason is because love is missing and a lot of us don't know who we are we don't have really true love hmm. for each other and we don't a lot of a lot of us don't really know who we really are when it comes to kings and queens of the most high God. A lot of mm-hmm. people don't know that we are the original 12 tribes of Judah. Girl, Basically you better talk about that. So, Wait a minute, Paul. That's R- why. Rewind, rewind, run it back, run it back. Because we are what, Miss Kimmy Kim? We, are all, we don't realize what? Um, we are the original of the 12 tribes. Every tribe was black. Girl, I'm about to leap over everything. in. <laughs> I'm about to run through this wall. Because I have that always wondered. Is I said, God, hardcore truth. Mm-hmm. I said, God, you know why? Because this is what came to me when I was like in high school. I have always wondered, how come? Why? I love, I love my, I love my brothers and my sisters, but how come? Even when they have everything, they still hate us. Why, God? They have the riches, right. they have the education, they have everything. Why do they still hate us? So mm-hmm. I guess I wasn't ready for that answer when I was in high school, so he <laughs> had to do a little knowledge at a time until I understood. Mm-hmm. So as I grew in grace of God because he can't give that information to everyone. You know about it. But he can't give that right. information to you when you're a milk believer because it's too Come much. On. It's too heavy. Mm. It's so heavy because then you be prideful, and he don't he doesn't want you to be prideful when you know who you are. So now I'm content mm. in who in knowing who I am. So he says to me mm. because they know who you are, and a lot of you guys don't know who you are. And we don't read, we don't research. We think because it's printed on the book that it is what it is, and that's why he says to focus on the things of the unseen. Anybody can print it. Uh, a book of pictures of history and put different pictures and replace the original pictures with another picture to make it seem as if that is the truth. But that's why he says to focus on the unseen things because like public enemy enemy used to say, don't believe the hype. I don't believe the hype anymore. I don't believe any of that stuff that they're teaching in in the U S schools. Mm. But I tell my girls, you have to know it because you, you need to get that degree. But it's not true. I tell them that's not true. Those things are not true. Mm-hmm. So you just have to have it for your education. But when you know mm-hmm. better, you do better. So I think that's the mm-hmm. reason why we are still lacking a true love for each other. Come on. That's it. I really did. That's it. Right there. That's it. I bang the gavel. I rest my case. Right there. That is hardcore raw dog truth. <laughs> 
because, oh, my gosh, I agree with absolutely everything you just said. And like you said, a milk believer, you could be you could be a Christian for 75 years and still be a milk believer because you don't want to accept the truth. If you are sold out to believing a lie, you don't even want to recognize or realize that your belief system is on faulty ground. It would take, I really believe that it would take for God to open up, he would have to speak to that person's soul, that per, that person's spirit, and say who you are in order for you to even have an ear to hear the actual truth. Because when I sit and I look at how blind we are as a people, how blindly we accept simply what is said, simply what, I'll just say America, we'll believe everything that America says, even though America has proven to hate us, think that it's without a cause. A lot of us think that it's just because we're black. But the truth of the matter is, if it was just because we were black, America would hate everybody in the, in, in, on this entire planet. Because everybody, and we look like everybody else. We look like everybody else. So they would hate everyone. They would, oh, my goodness, every other country that they America calls itself being aligned with right now or that are, quote, unquote, allies of us, I guess. Um, or the, no, 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 not even that. But the people, the other people from other countries that look like us, they welcome them over into America and they give them, you know, the benefits of America. You're, they're, they're able to come here and own businesses and so on and so forth, you know. But us, no, it's not so with us. So it's not because because we are black. It is exactly what you said, Kimmy. They hate us because we are God's chosen people. And it's not a prideful thing. It's not even a race thing. Because I'm going to tell you something. I, I know that I am like very many of us. Heck, when I thought that, when I thought that, you know, God's chosen people were the so-called Jews, the people who call themselves Jews now, I was just, I'm like, okay, well, you guys are chosen, are the chosen people. Okay, I'm just glad that Jesus loves me at all. That was my mind. And I know that I'm just, I know that there are very many Christians who are saying the same thing. Heck, I don't have to be God's chosen. You know what I'm saying? I'm chosen just because he chose to love me. He chose to accept me. And that was my mindset. But Going along with what we have been taught, we've been taught to hate ourselves. We've been taught to ignore our fellow brother and sister and to give to whatever leader says to give to them and that that's how we'll be blessed. We, while we and, blind, and the most don't know. Thing we're taught, mm -hmm. One thing we were taught to hate the light skin and the dark skin, is, and really, when we were mm -hmm. you know, missing. You know, I think what happened also when we were more able to become educated, that's when you probably took all the books and redid them. I was like, why, why didn't they want us to be educated? Because they wanted mm -hmm. all the books they have and reprint them to be, you know, to mm -hmm. who they are. Oh, say and that again. And that way that they can conditionalize us. Huh? Say that again. I'm they sorry. They wanted to reprint it to I, do I, what? to maybe change pictures or the histories because, yep. you know, a lot of us yeah. we, in Africa, we have books. We had lots of books. We yeah, had a before, lot of uh, books about us. Yeah. But you can't find those anymore, Lord, can you? <laughs> Come on. Come on. You are absolutely right. Will you help wake us up, Kimmy? You are absolutely no, that's God. right. <laughs> I have always you asked that absolute. question about they have everything. They still hate us. I never did understand that. Never. Yeah. And 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 look him, even with even with even with quote unquote white church and black church, and we can't act like it does not exist. I was looking at CNN News at Ellie Davis. Yeah, uh, segregation in church. Yeah. Yeah, Trent, Trent, yeah, Fox Two News report reported uh uh you know, he reported this on the Facebook. Put the post CNN News, newscast reporter quote, unquote, black three black churches were set on fire. Wow. 
everybody saying all this negative stuff. They saying all the stuff about about Trump and everything else. It's like, how are you blind to the fact that they said black church, <laughs> black church, white church, segregation? Bam, right there. That should be a that should be a, a red flag. These are the same people. These are the same people that came with their Catholicism and Christianity beliefs, and they had their they had their rosary chains in their hands while they came and enslaved us. We already had a relationship with God before they came. We knew God. We had a relationship with God. We loved God. We served God. We knew him and he knew us. He still knows us, and we are still God's chosen people. But just like what you said, Kenny, just like what you said, you said that they did not. Do you know that not only did they not want us to read their books, they wanted us to not speak at all, especially the women. They put muzzles. They put gag muzzles with uh, 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 razors on the inside of it because if the women, so that if the women moved their tongue, that their tongue would, would that you know, their tongues would, would, would get cut up because they said you know what? That, that, yeah, the women knew how to pray certain prayers and their oppressor would fall dead. And that's one of that's the reasons. Another reason, they didn't want us to have our own dialect. They wanted us to sound like European. That, yes. yes, exactly. That's they wanted us to forget our, our native tongue. They wanted us, they mm-hmm. did not want us to remember our heritage. At, I mean, at all. They, just, they didn't want us to remember right. our ancestors. They wanted us to Come forget who we are. We are. We are spiritual beings. Absolutely. Um, I remember We're my created. pastor. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Girl, you got this heated. Uh, I'm not taking over the show. <laughs> this is your show. Girl. <laughs> you just got me excited about this topic because. I have always wondered how come every um, ethnic group they broke in except for black people, and I understand I, I understand it now even more. I knew why, but I just didn't have the confirmation from God why, because we mm-hmm. are truly spiritual beings. Uh, naturally, yeah. even with the falsehood yeah. that was taught to us, we are sold out to that yeah. thing because our yeah. people, by nature, we love God. We yeah. love Him. And they were amazed at how spiritual we are and how how outwardly and aggressively we worship God and yeah. everything. You know, everybody else was amazed at how we, you know, oh, my goodness, it's a miraculous. We, by nature, this is who we are. It's not even a religion. It's who we are in our culture. This is how God created us. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We do and not have realize you ever, Have you ever wondered hmm. why? Have you ever wondered why, though? That's my question. God, why? <laughs> because why what? I know he loves everyone. And he want, Why he created us to be so spiritual? Because um, I'm going to be honest, um, a lot of, you know, my friends who are not black, they're not Christians. And I have always wondered what's yeah. the difference. And I have not gotten that answer yet. But um, oh. I have always wondered. Yeah, yeah. We're going to say that I for next week. I know the answer, but I don't think everybody is ready. I'm telling you, I don't think everybody is ready for that answer. I kid you not. I've I been don't know. That I, been... God hasn't given that to me yet. I, I have always wondered, how come more <laughs> black people <laughs> seem to be more spiritual people? I know. I never God. did that. I, I know you. See, you got more. You I'm see, gonna, Doc we, is, we, you know, some. We're going to have we're gonna have to have part two. I knew this was going to be a... Uh, uh, <laughs> I knew this was going to be a series because when we're yeah, talking about waking up and we're talking about yeah. actual truth, there cannot be just one show on this. There can't just be just an intro and then the meet and then bam, it's over. No, right. no. Right, right. So <laughs> we're, de- we'll, we'll, we're definitely, this is why, oh my gosh, this is why I love what I do. I absolutely love you. I absolutely love, <laughs> I love all of this. Oh my goodness, because it's just, oh, it's, it's magical, you know. Oh my goodness, you know, and and for a person to be able to just listen in and get some seeds of truth, you know, where God can step in and then send confirmation, and then that seed grows even more. It's a beautiful thing, you know. Um, it means more to me than than anything else in in life, you know. 
But you are definitely, I mean, there is that you're asking the right question. And why? Why is it that yeah. we seem to be more spiritual? And yeah. there is a re- there is a definite reason why we are. And we forgive really people is. right away. We are so Absolutely. forgiving. We really are. <laughs> We really are. We love. You know we I'll just okay, baby. It's okay, baby. Yeah, I yeah. I understand why, yeah. but why, why? <laughs> and the and the mothers, you know, the mothers who really, really, really do love God, whose lives are really dedicated to God. They are how oh how powerful they are. You know, will pray a demon off of you in two point five seconds, and you go on about your way like nothing ever even happened. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen it. I have seen it. I haven't seen not any other mother from any other culture as powerful as the women in our culture who are really living this thing as far as, you know, the best way that they know how. I really appreciate God because even, you know, even even in our ignorance, even in what we do not know, God is still gracious and merciful to us that he'll accept how we worship him wholeheartedly, even if it's not 100% according to, you know, his truth. You know, they, he knows that we have been deceived by our enemy. They're our enemy, you know, by nature. They are our enemies by nature, and this is not a race thing. This thing goes back to ancestry. You better preach that, girl. We're going to have to have part two, <laughs> and I have... Yeah. We got we got scripture. I have scriptures to back up everything <laughs> that I'm saying. So we're gonna have part two. But this is why we are hated because we've done absolutely nothing to them. Nothing. We haven't done anything to them. We haven't done anything to white supremacy. We were brought over here against nope. our will. And even when we were brought over here, you know, they went to the people here. To know what was going on, huh? But you have to remember you have to remember that there were black people already here, black Indians. So it's not like everybody is from exactly. Africa. Exactly. So Indians Indians really, to be honest, and I have scriptures to back this up too, but Indians really are not this, this is a, a, a European term. They're really not even Indians. Yeah. Even Mexicans are really not called Mexicans. Do you know that Indians right. are really they're really Hebrew? That's who we are. We're really Hebrew. We are actually Hebrew. descendants of Christ. <laughs> like I we said, the original about... tribe of in the original tribe Absolutely. of Judah. We are, of the, Judah. we are from the bloodline <laughs> of Christ. We are from the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses. We are from the bloodline. Oh my goodness! <laughs> we it's are like we how are they call us black, or they call us like they call us black huh? or African American. Like how they call us black or African American, exactly. Yeah, and even in We're even not, in, in, in I've been told even in Christian church I've been told we've been, it's been taught this don't you don't want to play you don't want to pay too much attention to the Old Testament because it's only talking about the law the devil is a lie the Old no, Testament it talks about it talks about, it talks about the foundation of who we are right absolutely it even talks about how and they even explain in Scripture in the Old Testament. It says, I think, oh, my gosh, who, ah, uh, let me look. I think it was, let me see. I think it was Jeremiah that said, even Job was black. The disciples oh, everybody were black. black. Yes. Everybody was black. Christ. Christ. That's in Jesus Africa. Up. Yeah, black. I'm trying, and this is how I know that it would take God to wake to actually speak to the individual first before they even have an ear to hear the rest of God's truth. Because I even tried to talk to a sister, another Christian, you know what I'm saying? And she, you know, beautiful dreads and all, as beautifully black as she possibly could be, baby. I love it. Oh, she's gorgeous to me. But she does not believe that Christ, that his skin was black. She even said, well, you know, down there in the Middle right East, right. which, yeah, which, by the way, right. Middle East is also right. a European term. Do you know that? The Middle East yeah, is a European pro- term. Yes. <laughs> you probably will so, have to show her revelation. Well, I did. And this, here's the thing, though. She says, well, you know, well, down there in the 
Well, she has to she has to come to her terms. You know, a lot of people not ready for that's why I don't force it on people. I just tell you what I have gotten from God and if you believe fine. Absolutely. You have someone who's Absolutely. not ready. Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's why I said it takes for well that's why I said it takes for one it takes for God to actually wake up that person before they hear anything else. Exactly. But I was just giving the you example. Yeah. I was just giving the example of why. Because, you know, she says that, you know, well, when I try to think about Christ, I think about the people in the Middle East, you know, how they had the dark skin, but their hair well, you know, their hair is pretty silky, you know. Uh okay. that's not what the Bible they were says. Down. You know what I'm saying? He the, now look the the Bible says plainly that he had hair like wool, white as snow. <laughs> right. And his feet was as burnt bronze. Burnt right. bronze. Burnt bronze. Right. Dark top. You cannot and you cannot <laughs> stand that sun in Africa being white, so it's like common sense. Period. Period. They yeah. didn't even come from the places where we came from. Period. They did not. They did not. Now I will say I will say this I will say this Kimmy and then we can oh I don't know if we can close uh, uh I will say this okay at the time way back when Adam and Eve were created okay uh-huh. and Cain and Abel Cain and Abel brought their offering to the to to God and mm-hmm. God accepted Abel's offering rejected Cain's offering Cain killed Abel. God came to Cain and asked where was his brother because his blood cried out to him. And Cain, outright, blunt, disrespectful, arrogant, hateful, enraged, in my opinion, his enraged and all of that, his response was, am I my brother's keeper? You talking to almighty, all-powerful all knowing. Well, we, got some, we got some issues too. Yeah, but I think you're talking to. But wait a minute, you're talking to the Alpha and the Omega. You're in the very right. beginning of of time here on Earth, as far as mankind is concerned. And this is what right. you you taught. You're taught to uh, 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 obey God. You're taught to, and you kill your brother, and you respond to your Creator. Your you know what I'm saying? You respond, am I my brother's keeper? I'm sorry. I failed to see how we as a people all together having seen God and talking to God like that. I cannot see it. I Killing well, your brother and then talking well, we to God go, like that. Remember, Joe questioned God. So I'm not going to say I never questioned. <laughs> no, wait a minute. That's different. That's different. Well, Joe didn't outright blunt. He but did not disrespect God at all. He did not disrespect no, God no, at no, all. No, no, no. What I'm saying is people think that it's a disrespect when you question God. So there have and been times see, I question that's, that's something else. That's, that's, yeah. that's something else that we're taught in Christianity. Right. I think that is, you know, it, that's something else that keeps us blind or keeps us bound in like a slave-like mentality. That's that thing that causes us to not want to ask questions when people call it themselves right. teaching us, I but don't know. have anything to back it up. <laughs> we, you won't ask your professor, well, where did you get this from? Well, why is this like this? We're taught not to ask right. those who are in quote-unquote right. authority questions. And so we're just taught to just uh, 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 abide by protocol. And not, and this is why we blindly, we blindly get in bed with Ishtar. We blindly get in bed with the uh, the other idol false god Mithra. We get in bed and we don't even know what we're doing because we haven't even asked the question. We don't even know what we're doing. We think that this is God. We think it's okay. We think God is all in this. The devil is a lie. This is why we don't ask these questions, Kimmy. I'm telling you. Because we've been taught, oh, you, you don't, don't you do it. <laughs> don't question, don't ask. Well, well, didn't God say, ask and it shall be given? Seek and ye shall find, knock and the door be open unto you? Didn't it say, doesn't the Bible say, ask God for wisdom? So if we can't ask God for nothing, if we can't question God about anything, how are we supposed to, come on now. How are we supposed to know anything? Well, come on, <laughs> you're preaching out because you just back up. You just said something that was very profound. We can question our 
Father. But you know how some people are. You just have to pray for them. They're, you know, Absolutely. Fine. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the wake-up call on. right here. <laughs> this is the wake-up call. Because we have to, it's time for us to come out of this mind, this slave-like mindset. This is the this is the way that the slave masters have taught our people. Do as I say, not as I do. This is what we tell our kids. Do as I say, not as I yep. do. Don't question me. Don't Come ask me no questions. And then we wonder why they grow up all messed up in 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 in, in the communities and everything. Why they don't know anything, but they're just going by what they feel, what they what they're being influenced by. Come on, they don't want to tell them anything. And they didn't even understand why you were doing what you were doing, but you were saying something else. <laughs> oh, now. Lordy. Well, oh, girl, Father, we, we, did, uh, we better come back on next week for part two. Uh, we are coming back next week for part two. Kimmy, you asked a valid question, and I think that part two of this should be on that va- very valid, very valid question. Why? Why are we? Why are we hated? Why, or why do we? Why do we hate each other? And what should we do? What can we do to solve that issue? Why we don't know who we are and how we can find out. That's next week, next Tuesday. I hope you'll be able to join us next week, uh, Kimmy Kim. Here. <laughs> and bring and bring my boy if he's able too. I like him too. Yes, absolutely. 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 I need to have another. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Yes. Because I really so it's gonna be that education and knowledge is power and wisdom. Absolutely. God said he'll give you wisdom if you ask for it. So Absolutely. And he also said my people perish from a lack of knowledge. We you know. perish uh-huh. when we have when we don't have the knowledge that Believe we need, we perish. It. And it is yep. not God's will that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's will. Yep. Yes. All right, much. That we well. know him. That I we know him. And once again, another successful woman. Huh? Which <laughs> I said, I just want to thank you for once again for having me on your podcast and another one. My goodness, thank you for being on, Kimmy. Oh my goodness, you know, you you. I guess we we we're like that for each other. <laughs> we get each other going, and it's just always good. I can't wait. Um, oh my goodness, it's just it's just awesome. I can't wait for next week. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to talk further um, about about this afterwards. Um, is there anything that you want to tell the the listeners, Kimmy? Um, before we before we leave the show tonight. I just want to say thank you all for coming on, and uh, please continue on following Elle. And uh, thank you once again for having me on your podcast, and I enjoyed it. Oh, I have to. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, Kimmy Kim. Um, I want to thank all the listeners. Um, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you, Kimmy, again, again, and again. I can't thank you enough. Um, I just want to acknowledge, you know, the Elation. Uh, radio family, the positive Jerry Royce and the positive power family. Uh, I just want to thank everybody, uh, you know, for the love and support. Uh, we will see you all on next Tuesday right here on Elations Radio at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Everyone, please take it easy. Please be safe. Have a wonderful rest of the week and have a very blessed week in We'll see you next week. Good night.